adrenal axis. That pituitary axis, the hypothalamic pituitary axis, also communicates to your thyroid. So people can burn out part of that area neurologically and need nutritional support for that region. So the type of nutritional support we do in our office is not just to replace or support a gland, it can actually be to support your adrenal rhythm or it can be to support your hypothalamic pituitary drive, the neurological drive that signals the glands to work because people that are having problems with thyroid tend to also have problems with adrenals and they also have problems in other areas such as their, their sex hormones. We run food sensitivity tests. I run tests to look for food sensitivities because they can cause an autoimmune reaction. They can drive your immune system and they can be causing your thyroid problem. Okay? People can be as sensitive to gluten, soy, yeast, egg, milk. We run panels to determine are you genetically allergic to certain foods? Do you have celiac disease? When people come see me with a thyroid problem, they don't just have a thyroid problem. They have an underlying metabolic problem that is driving them to have other health conditions, signs and symptoms besides just a thyroid problem. Very, very rarely does somebody just come in and have just a thyroid problem. They have underlying health problems. People come and see me and I break things down where we can look at them from a functional model. We look at stool microbial tests. The great thing is they have some great tests on the market now. One of them is a DNA stool mi microbial test where we can check for gut infections, parasites, yeast, and do they have the normal gut, inf gut flora to convert things like their thyroid hormone. People don't realize when you make, when your thyroid gets signaled to work, it produces T4 and T3. And t they both have to be in an active form. Well, in the standard medical model, they measure TSH, which is your pituitary gland stimulating your thyroid to work, and they measure T4, which is the output of the thyroid gland. Well, the output of T4 is, is inert. It's not usable form. It has to be carried around on taxi. That's called your thyroid binding globulin, and it carries it around, and it takes it to your liver. 60% of your thyroid hormone gets converted into an active form in, through a process in the liver. So if you're not functioning well because you have a thyroid problem, you may very well have a liver problem. You need to do a detoxification and liver clearance so we can get you working better so that you can convert the thyroid, the thyroid hormone that you produce rather just than just taking a replacement model. 20% of it is converted in the gut. Most people in our society have gut problems. Gut is direct relationship to brain. There's a gut, gut there's a saying, gut inflammation equals brain inflammation. Brain inflammation equals gut inflammation. People are chronically inflamed. They're not functioning well. And so many people have gut and digestive problems. Gut, the gut system is the house of your immune system. 70% of your immune system is in your gut. It has a function to convert things. It helps you to absorb things. But it is also your defense mechanism. I'm always amazed that everybody's worried about running out and getting a flu shot instead of working on building up their health. And 70% of your immune system is in your gut. So you need to be working on building your gut up. I do functional medicine in our office. That's what we do. We do functional nutraceuticals to improve your health, and we do it based on lab work. There's a hierarchy of things I work on with people. The first thing we determine is, are you autoimmune? If you're autoimmune, we need to do two things. We need to remove the invader that's causing your immune system to, to trigger the problem, and then we need to balance out your immune system using nutrition. The other thing is you could have sheer dysregulation of your immune system, and if that's what you have, we need to do nutritional support that, of the areas that regulate your immune system. They support the, the, how their Th1, Th2 system interact. We fix sugar regulation. That's the next thing. 
if people have sugar regulation problems, they have fuel delivery problems. It's not just that I'm getting fat, I'm having peripheral neuropathy, I have high cholesterol. You can just start naming off all of the things related to sugar regulation problems. It's the fact is that the, if you don't have good sugar regulation problems, you have cognitive decline because your brain is so dependent on proper fuel. People have anemias. If you're anemic, we got to fix that. Anemias mean, again, you don't have enough energy for your brain and nervous system to run your autonomic system and how your body works, much less how you're feeling. We work on supporting the thyroid pathways. We work on the adrenals, supporting the adrenals. We do liver detoxification. We do liver support, biliary support. I can't tell you how many people come in that have chronic metabolic problems, that have poor gut function, poor liver function, and they have poor fat absorption, fat di digestion problems, and three quarters of them tell me, oh, I've had my gallbladder taken out. And I'm like, it's very important if you've had those things happen, or if you're having problems handling fats, that we get you on proper supportive digestive enzymes to help you with fat absorptions. Because if you don't, you're not gonna absorb your fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K. But also, when I run my stool profile on people, they come back and they have very high fecal fat scores. So what that tells me is you have an inflammation in your gut, you're not absorbing your nutrition, your immune system's fired up, and you feel like crap. And I see that a lot in my chronic fatigue people, and I see that a lot in my thyroid people, and I see that a whole lot in my fibromyalgia people. Okay, Anemias, we talk about sugar regulation in autoimmune. Those are the things I work on. The other thing I want to talk about is lab tests. We are very into complete thorough labs because we can't, it, the, the model of just taking and running basic labs and patching you up is not working for the majority of people. It's not working for the majority of people who come see my, to my office that have chronic health conditions. So when we look at things, people have been told your lab tests are normal. I want you to know that most lab tests are very inaccurate. They're done on a standard bell curve. And a bell curve means you're being compared for two standard deviations to the people that go to the, 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 the lab in your area. So if you're going to a lab and people are very sick, people are very medicated, you're being thrown in there too and using that curve as a standard cutoff of what is healthy. And the truth is, you should be using functional physiological markers of health, not standard deviations compared to the social norm that you're going to. So people fall in that gap on each end of the bell curve, they're told they're healthy, and the truth is, physiologically, they're not functioning like they should be. For example, the lab ranges for sugar is 65 to 110 for traditional allowances. I can tell you those labs are way out of whack for what it takes to run your, your brain and nervous system. Your functional glucose should be between 85 and 100. So I see people come in that they're like, they can't find anything wrong and their blood sugar level is 73. That is so hypoglycemic, it's unbelievable. It causes poor function, it causes people to have sugar regulation problems, hormonal regulation problems, stress gets magnified, it stresses their cortisol, and they're not doing very well. They're tired and irritable. They're not doing well between meals, okay? They're crashing and burning. Thyroid, we run functional lab that works for thyroid. Uh, and let's see, we look at, uh, the other thing we look at is triglycerides. Triglycerides is a great marker for people having problems with sugar regulation on, as far as insulin resistance, meaning the cells are having problems carrying insulin, allowing it, uh, uh, the carrier insulin to open up the cell and carry sugar into it. And triglyceride levels is what we look for. And triglycerides, we look for 75 to 100. So if I see it different than that, I know that the person's having problems with that. The other thing we use, hemoglobin. We look at your hemoglobin to see if you're anemic. 